Welcome. Today we're going to be discussing uh, academic conferences um, and as connected with that uh, writing of abstracts, which is the way that you apply to most academic conferences, um, at least in our fields of uh, linguistics and applied linguistics. Um, and they're also useful uh, in part uh, for pairing with any kind of paper that you're writing um, and for understanding uh, the content of other papers in a sort of quick uh, snappy way. So we're going to talk about abstracts a bunch this week. Um, first of all, academic conferences, what are they and why do we go to them? Well, so here's an idealistic answer. We work in a field, right? All of us have some field. Um, and that implies that we're part of a collective enterprise, an enterprise that attempts to do something. Maybe that something is describing and analyzing languages. Maybe it's teaching languages. Maybe it's just to develop uh, theories of effective language teaching or any other potential goal that you might have with applied linguistics uh, or basic linguistics. I think there's more different kinds of goals in the applied fields. Uh, but whatever your area of interest or the field that you end up working in, uh, you are presumably trying to accomplish some goals. And of course, none of us is going to be perfectly effective at achieving these goals. Um, but being part of a field means something. So what do I mean when I say that we're in a field? Well, it means that there's other people out there. We have help. And conferences are one of the primary ways that you get to talk to people who are working towards common goals with you uh, in order to share ideas. And, and I've put researchers in here uh, because this is a research methods class after all. But really, it doesn't even have to be researchers. It could be other practitioners. It could be other anybody who's working uh, towards the same kinds of goals that you are. Um, and so conferences give you a way to meet up with other similarly minded individuals uh, who may uh, know things that you don't know or who may be interested in the things that you know and benefit from them. Um, and also, I mean, if you're going to be presenting at a conference, then it allows uh, you to have your own ideas critiqued by knowledgeable individuals, right? So uh, that might sound a little bit scary. That word critiqued here is sort of uh, disguising some complexity. Um, but, you know, this can be very uh, adversarial and unpleasant. But most of the time, this is really a collaborative um, and friendly kind of environment, especially in, in language and linguistics fields. Uh, you know, people tend to be pretty friendly, at least in basic linguistics. I guess I know a little bit less about applied linguistics and TESOL, but uh, certainly in basic linguistics, I mean, people are really friendly and they're really happy to talk to you about any kind of linguistic topics, uh, especially if you're a grad student, right? Um, that said, I mean, there's also less idealistic reasons to go to conferences, um, and these can be career related, right? They make us more visible in the field, um, which is good if we're looking for jobs or if we want the people reviewing our papers uh, that we're submitting to journals or our grant proposals or our tenure files to know who we are, right? If somebody's heard of you before, then that's useful. Um, it also looks good on your CV or your resume. We'll talk about uh, CVs and resumes a little bit later in this class. Um, and yeah, they're sort of sources of prestige and they're aligned to put on your resume. Hey, I presented at this conference. Um, and then the last one here, you know, this is sort of neglected, but it's uh, true that these are sometimes fun. Like some conferences are really, really fun, especially if you already know some people in your field and you don't get to see them very often. Um, it's really wonderful to be able to hang out with uh, with people you know in your field and just talk to them about things. Um, yeah, conferences are often very fun. Not always, but you know sometimes. And I, I don't I don't think we should neglect that, right? It's it's an important part of why you want to go to a conference. Uh, we've had grad students, MA students in our program. Uh, go to academic conferences during their time here and almost universally they all enjoy it and found it really exciting. Now for obvious reasons the opportunities are going to be somewhat limited this year uh, but it is something to keep in mind for the future. Um, so at the moment there's basically no in-person academic conferences happening anywhere in the world. I think that's more or less true. Uh, maybe in like New Zealand where they haven't had a COVID case in three weeks, there's some regional or national conferences going on, uh, but you can't go to those anyway. Uh, and yeah, basically conferences are off at the moment, at least in-person ones. But a lot of people are now taking conferences that were supposed to happen this year and putting them online through Zoom or through some other platform. So I've been to a couple of these this year. It's kind of fun. It's kind of enjoyable. It's not quite the same as being at a real 
uh, in-person conference, but it is something to consider. It's also much cheaper and easier to go to conferences that are like this. Um, if you do want to travel to a conference or register for a conference, uh, it sort of depends on what funding is like in any particular year, but it may be the case that the department has funds available uh, to help you pay for your expenses if you want to travel somewhere or if you want to register for an online conference. Also, a lot of these online conferences um, are going to be free of charge, especially for students. You'll find that a lot of conferences have financial options to help graduate students attend uh, because it's understood that, you know, it's not as easy for them to pay for things. Um, so, yeah, definitely worth checking into if you think you'd be interested in this. Um, and presumably we'll have in-person conferences back sometime next year. Uh, of course, it's not clear when. Um, but we'll see what happens. So it's definitely worth thinking about academic conferences um, because there are options this year. They don't involve in-person travel. So in a way, it's like a lower investment in time and effort and money. Um, and then there will be normal conferences again at some point. Okay, so first question here, well, how do I know if a conference is going to be good or not? And of course, you can't ever truly no, but there are some uh, very useful things to consider when you're thinking about what which conference to go to. If you want to maximize your chances of meeting exciting people who are working in the same area as you, uh, meeting people who will be useful for you to know and hearing things that will be useful for you to hear. Um, and the first factor here is going to be relevance, right? So uh, looking at a conference description, we'll do this in a moment. Does the conference description seem relevant to my work, right? Is it the topic I work on? What kinds of papers have been presented there previously? What kind of a conference is it like? What are the keynote addresses? Keynote addresses are um, might be called plenary talks or invited talks. It's when uh, prominent people are invited to give a talk at one of these conferences. Um, and there might be one or several depending on the conference, but that's sort of setting the tone for what you can expect that conference to be like. Um, and then looking at the people who are likely to go, who, you know, if there's a program online, you can see who's presenting there. Um, if you can look at the previous conferences, you know, are these people who come from my general area of academia, is this uh, the kind of conference that people in my field go to, right? That's going to be um, an important factor. Uh, and then the second factor here, I mean, depending on what your goals are, would be prestige. Um, and uh, really, if you're just sort of going to, to see the lay of the land or to learn things, this is not important. But if you're thinking in more career oriented terms, um, prestige is a factor in conferences. Uh, so, I mean, is the conference generally well regarded? Do people consider it to be a good conference? What's the typical acceptance rate? So generally, conferences with low acceptance rates tend to be perceived as more prestigious than those with higher acceptance rates. Have prominent people who I respect, who I know in my field, presented at this conference before? And again, you might want to look back at uh, websites for previous iterations of the conference. Um, is the conference often cited in publications? This is going to be probably more relevant in basic linguistics, where it's pretty normal to cite um, sometimes conference presentations that aren't even published papers, um, but also proceedings, published proceedings of conferences, where some conferences take all the talks that were given there um, and allow people to write them up as detailed papers and put them all together into a volume of papers that's like a book. They call that a proceedings volume. Um, and it counts as a real publication. It may or may not be peer reviewed, but um, it's a real publication. And then uh, the question is, well, do people ever cite the papers from this conference? And again, in basic linguistics, it's fairly common to cite the proceedings of a conference, uh, maybe a little bit less common in applied linguistics, although I think this also happens. So that's something to look at as well. Um, and then uh, there could be a variety of other factors. So the relevance and the prestige are probably going to be the two main ones. And I would say relevance comes first here. But of course, there's going to be issues like practicality. Can I actually get there? Do I have the money to go to this conference? Will I be funded? Um, educational value. Am I going to learn important stuff that I don't know at this conference? Or is it just going to be a bunch of people who are saying the same things that I always say? Um, and there, you know, there could be others like, um, you know, is it in a sunny part of the world with good beaches and good food, right? I'm not going to pretend that that's not a factor. Of course it is. Um, you want to, you want to do something pleasant if you're going to travel, right? Uh, so what's the best way to find conferences? Well, I'm going to give you a couple options here and, but I'm going to start by saying that I think the, the best way to find a conference is to ask somebody who knows, right? So good conference is a cultural construct. It's not something you can measure by looking at a website. Um, it exists in the minds of a community of individual 
researchers. And uh, one of the advantages of being in this program, of being in our department, is that we have lots of researchers in all different areas of linguistics here in applied linguistics and TESOL who are going to know, uh, you know, what, what uh, conferences they consider uh, enjoyable and prestigious and to be useful. Um, so ask your professors. Again, uh, somebody who's an expert in your area will know what kinds of conferences are good conferences to go to. Um, that said, uh, you know, if you're not getting a lot of uh, leads there, if you just want to generate some preliminary ideas before you talk to anybody about it, um, there are some other useful resources. Um, number one here is the linguist list. This is more for basic linguistics, although there's going to be a few uh, applied linguistics kind of conferences announced here. Um, this resource is not only for conferences. It's the most important professional resource for all kinds of linguists. Uh, it has a... Uh, uh, job announcements and hiring announcements both inside and outside academia for both applied and basic linguistics. Um, it has a comprehensive list of conferences in all areas of linguistics and related fields. Um, and you can also get an email digest from them uh, where they will summarize or at least give you a, a, a heading for each of the things that's been announced there each week and send you an email that lists all the things that have been announced that week uh, right to your email inbox. Um, honestly, this ends up being sort of annoying after a while because you get a lot of emails from them, uh, but it is a useful way to keep track of what's going on in the field. Um, and then the second suggestion here uh, is more for applied linguistics stuff. Um, the American Association for Applied Linguistics keeps a calendar um, that's mostly applied linguistics conferences um, and some general linguistics conferences. So let's take a quick click through here. Um, here's the linguist list uh, and they are frequently trying to raise money because they are underfunded and uh, you know, don't charge for their services. Um, so that's what this is about. Let me just make sure my view is okay here. Yeah, that looks okay. Um, so here you come to their homepage and you get uh, recent postings and right away there's a bunch of conferences here. So Ohio State University Congress on Hispanic and Lusophone Linguistics. Um, and this is a call for papers. Uh, that's probably what you're looking for if you're looking for a conference. The call for papers is the initial announcement where they say, hey, anybody who wants to send a paper in can send it in. You might also find announcements of conferences where they've already decided which papers are accepted, and you might want to go to one of those. Um, but uh, if you want to submit to a conference, you need to find the call for papers. Um, so let's take a look here. Ohio State University, Congress on Hispanic and Lusophone linguistics. Um, and there's going to be a bunch of other uh, conferences here. Of course, the name is going to tell you something about whether it's um, a conference you want to look at in more detail. You can see this is mixed in with all sorts of other announcements. So these are jobs you can apply for. Uh, this is going to be an industry job. This is a, an academic job for uh, somebody with a doctorate. Um, Here's a discussion, uh, online panel discussion announcement. Here's people asking questions about different linguistic uh, facts. Um, and then there's uh, these FYI posts. So there's all sorts of stuff in the linguist list. If you're just interested in conferences, um, you can look at this browse button. Sorry, am I still in the viewer here? I am, okay. Uh, and within the browse button, you can browse all sorts of different announcements. Um, we're gonna be interested in conferences and events. What happens? Uh, oh, whoa, ah, this is a fancy new interface for the linguist list. Uh, should we browse conferences or browse calls for papers? Let's look at calls for papers. Um, and so this is just showing you in order, basically, um, everything that's popped up on the linguist list in the last few days. Um, so I'm going to maybe start looking at recent announcements and see if I see anything relevant, or maybe I'm going to refine uh, by the language that I work on or by the part of linguistics that I'm in. Um, so this is a mix of basic and applied linguistics conferences, uh, communication and multicultural society. Um, <clears throat> You know, that sounds more like an applied linguistics topic, visual literacy and digital communication, uh, early years language, network doctoral webinar. Um, hmm. Oh, it's in Murcia. We have some students from there. Uh, agency and intentions in language. Uh, Conference on Educational Technology, so obviously Applied Linguistics there. Um, indigenous Hands and Voices of African Identity. Um, this is going to be about minority languages and language uh, justice. Uh, Illinois Language and Linguistics Society. Uh, embracing Language in a Changing World. 
phonology in the Nordic countries, indigenous languages of Russia in contact with Russian. So obviously these range from very, very general topics to extremely specific ones. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, depending on what you're studying, you might find a very specific conference and there's some advantages to that. Or you might want to go to a much broader general linguistics or applied linguistics conference. There can also be uh, advantages to that as well. If you go to a very narrow and specific one, you're going to meet people who are working on the same kind of stuff that you're working on. And if you go to a more general one, you'll have the opportunity to uh, meet lots of uh, interesting people from all over your field. I'm going to take a look at this one that we saw on the front page just to get a little bit more of a detailed look. This is the OSU, Ohio State University Conference on uh, Hispanic and Lusophone Linguistics. Uh, again, making sure I'm in the viewer here. I am. Okay, so what's going on here? I want to find out if this is a good conference. So uh, what do I know about this? Well, it's going to be online in March. That seems to make sense. I wouldn't plan on traveling in March. If this were a normal year, um, Ohio State is in Columbus, Ohio. It's about three or three and a half hours drive from Morgantown. So potentially somewhere I could get to relatively easily. Uh, if I had a car, there may also be bus service there. So there's some sort of practical aspects here. It's about general linguistics. That sounds good. Um, what do they say about it? Uh, this conference is one of the premier graduate student conferences on Hispanic and Lusophone linguistics hosted in the U.S. Well, that sounds wonderful because I'm an MA student. I'm a new graduate student. I've never been to a conference before. This is a graduate student conference, and what that means is that it's going to be a little bit less high stakes. It's a place for graduate students to come and get some professionalization and experience. There's going to be faculty there, and they're going to be trying to be helpful and helping to train people and foster their uh you know, interest in, in language research. So this is likely to be a very, very friendly and supportive kind of a conference. If it were a super high prestige international conference of some professional organization, you'd be a little bit more worried about, uh, you know, maybe it being sort of hyper aggressive and competitive kind of conference. This doesn't sound like that at all. This sounds like a really nice conference. Um, who are the organizers? Uh, Jennifer Lehman and Danae Perez. I don't happen to know these people's names. Maybe if this were in, um, you know, my area, I would I would just know who these people are. But if I want to find out a little bit more about what kind of a conference it's going to be like, I'm going to look up Jennifer Lehman, OSU, Ohio State University, and see who she is. Uh, here's her Google Scholar account. That's going to have the papers that she's written. Uh, what do we have here? Professor of, Sp of Spanish Linguistics at George Mason University, um, which is a university in Virginia. Uh, so here's what she works on. Recasts and second language development, uh, interactional input and incorporation of feedback. So like already we can see this is a, a second language acquisition or um, foreign language acquisition person uh, who works on different kinds of feedback to a learner, right? That's recasts are when you uh, restate something that somebody said, but correcting one or more of their errors. That's what a recast is. So that's one of the people organizing it that could speak to the relevance of the conference. Maybe I'm going to do the same thing uh, for this person. Uh, it turns out that that first person is not actually an Ohio State professor uh, and neither is this one. So it's being organized by uh, people outside Ohio State. Um, but, uh, you know, I've heard of George Mason before. Uh, the Zurich University of Applied Sciences, I couldn't tell you, it's in Switzerland, it's probably a real university. Um, English and Language Shift in Paraguay's New Australia on the relevance of voice quality. This is going to be a phonetics or phonology paper. Um, and, you know, these are just showing you papers that she has on this academia.edu website. Um, and so the point is uh, you can find out information about the people organizing the conference. That will tell you something about what kinds of research are happening there. The actual call for papers will give you some information about what kind of a conference it is, although maybe not a ton. So here's what they say here. We welcome papers dealing with any aspect of linguistics in the Hispanic or Lusophone world, including but not limited to, oh, this is useful. Sociolinguistics, language contact, language policy, language and education, Creole and indigenous languages, psycholinguistics, historical linguistics, phonetics, phonology, morpho. Okay, so basically anything in the language sciences or language education sciences is going to be fair game for this conference. This sounds really promising to me. Um, speakers will be given 20 minutes for a presentation and 10 minutes for discussion afterwards. Um, 
Here's uh, the abstract submission information, very minimal here. Abstract should not exceed 500 words and must be submitted at this website. Beyond that, they don't say anything at all about the abstract. Some other conferences will have very, very detailed information on abstracts. Others will have very minimal information. Um, and then the last thing you'd probably want to look at here is the website. So this is the uh, website for the conference. And what does it look like? So they have a vision and a mission statement that will tell you about what the conference is for. Um, I'm going to skip that for the moment. Uh, it's going to happen via Zoom. I'm sorry, I'm confused now because they said it was in March, but now I'm seeing this one in October. Uh, oh, and I guess they're having some sort of a keynote presentation in October, even though the conference is not till March, maybe? Well, I don't know. Uh, if I were really considering applying here, I'd probably go and check that out further. Um, Oh, and I'm sorry, these top level menu items here are not actually about the symposium. They're about the Department of Spanish and Portuguese. Um, but yeah, here's the annual symposium. Uh, here's the keynote speaker, Whitney Chapel, University of Texas, San Antonio, Associate Professor of Hispanic Linguistics. Uh, she is a uh, full, on a Fulbright scholarship at the Universidad de Murcia, or Murcia, uh, and she has a doctorate from OSU. Um, here's what she works on. Does that seem relevant to me? Uh, maybe. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a look at what she is talking about and see if it looks interesting to me. Um, <clears throat> oh, I see. So they canceled this in October, and they're having an online version in uh, March. I'm going to look at... Uh, maybe past instances of this conference. If I want to find it, this is the 23rd one. Maybe I'm going to look up 22nd Hispanic and Lusophone Linguistics Symposium OSU. Here's the website. It's going to be from 2019. And let's see here. I can see the keynote speakers from last year. Um, I can see the call for papers from last year. Maybe I can get the conference program if I'm lucky. Looks like this website does not have the conference program from last year on it. That's a pain in the butt. That would be a really useful thing to look at. I can see who went to the conference, what kinds of work did they present. Uh, maybe if I do a little bit more searching, I'll be able to find that. In any case, uh, I think you get the point of this demonstration, which is go check out the conference that you're interested in. Um, if you want to know whether it's a good conference for you to go to or not. Um, and just to show you, this is the other website I've linked to here. Um, this is more specifically geared towards applied linguistics, and it will have some TESOL conferences probably as well. Um, and again, you can browse this just like you browse the other site. You'll see they also have TESOL conferences here. Or actually, this is, looks like uh, a journal call rather than a conference call. Um, but you get the point, right? So this is how we're going to look for conferences. We want to really take some care to make sure we're picking out things that are going to be useful and educational for us. Now, once we do that, all of these calls for papers are asking us to send in an abstract. Uh, and the next part of the lecture will be about what is an abstract and what is it for?